Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a great start to your new week or finishing off a fantastic weekend of Black Friday sales and hopefully getting out into nature while these markets are relatively quiet and boring. Doesn't mean we have to go anywhere because this is where the big money is made, of course, at these lower prices. And it's also made when the market is very, very confused. At the moment, we're seeing interest rate rises, we're seeing stock markets bouncing, cryptos falling, real estate stabilizing. And so there's a lot of confusion going on in the market. And if we can figure this out in time for the next move up, then of course, we're going to be in a much better position than other people. And of course, there is also the view that the market could go down a lot further, which is why a lot of people are still sitting on the sidelines. And in this video, I'm going to go through some analysis looking at interest rates, uh, potential of Fed pivoting and what happens there, marrying in the S&P bounce that we have currently seen, we are currently in, along with interest rate rises and the real estate cycle. And of course, what this means for Bitcoin moving forward into this next stage of the real estate cycle, the S&P bull market. I know that can trigger some, they're expecting major collapses and what that then means to Bitcoin in this stage of a cycle that Bitcoin has never been in before. It has never been through this particular area of a real estate cycle. So let's dive into that in today's video. Make sure you have liked, subscribe, bell notification icon if you find some value from it. And don't worry, I'll remind you at the end of the video as well if you prefer to wait to see what you're getting for your time right now. These last few videos on the channel, highly recommend. I'll leave a link to them at the end of this video that will pop up on your left hand side. So make sure you do check these out. These are part of the macro series here on the channel. And being that it's end of November coming up to the start of the following month in December, uh, I'll also do another macro update on Bitcoin for December as well. That's been a running series on the channel. So I hope you are liking that. Let me know by hitting the like button and dropping us a comment. All right. So a couple of quick pointers here that we'll talk about in the video. Fed pivot. So we might start to hear about this. What the hell does this mean? A lot of the talk will probably start next month or the following month. Uh, once the Fed comes through with their next meeting, which is going to be 13th, 14th of, of December, which we'll look at in just a second. And then we'll start to hear of talks of some sort of pivot, which essentially means the Federal Reserve res will reverse its existing monetary policy stance. Some believe this would just mean that we've gone up in interest rates and go down in interest rates straight after that. And of course, none of this stuff actually happens so black and white. A lot of people say, well, you talking about, if you're talking about a market going up, they just think that the market has to go up and there are no down days. It is very, very strange. But when you come to the market and you're new, perhaps, that is basically the thought process. If market is down, it has to keep going down, 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 down. And so I'd say the same thing happens here. The Federal Reserve reversing its monetary policy doesn't necessarily mean that it has to then go and reverse all of the interest rate rises and you have to wait for those until the market is ready to start moving again because we've already started seeing it moving. And so how this can be explained is that the markets are pricing in future announcements or future events that they believe uh, what is going to come. They're not waiting on any sort of news announcement to say that the Fed is going to drop their interest rates. They're not waiting for these things. But this is what a lot of the unfortunate dumb money retail wait for. And they just keep seeing bad, bad, bad. Meanwhile, the markets are going up. So just as a quick reminder here on the dates, 13th, 14th, this has basically been the date that we're waiting for on the S&P for our uh, next overbalancing price. Basically, it's a bullish signal that we're looking for. So stay tuned to the channel for that. In terms of the Forex factory data here, we will be waiting to see what these particular boxes come in with. We'll have a forecast coming up. Maybe the market is expecting a half a percent rate rise rather than what we've seen over the last four rate rises being three quarters of a percent. And so the half a percent might be the start of a pivot, at least pivot talks in the media. And we all know that anything that's referenced to us by the news, obviously the media, is essentially just more noise out in the market. And so I wouldn't be so sure about those particular pivot ideas until it actually happens. But in this case, the market, as we'll see with this particular article here, the market is possibly expecting a half a percent rate rise, which of course is smaller than the three quarters of a percent and maybe further smaller rate rises in the future. So as we start to see the Fed slow on its interest rates, it's only natural that we'll possibly hear the news and everyday retail talk about the Fed 
dropping interest rates as well. Uh, I'm not expecting there to be big drops and we'll have a look at some data as well to reason with why we could even see slight drops, but the prices keep going up, which is what we've seen in history. And so this particular history here, looking at a more macro cycle of interest rates before we dive down into the shorter term timeframes, this stuff goes back to 1914. And of course, we might be able to find some other data further back. This is over 100 years of interest rate data on these particular websites, we only get data back to around the mid 50s. However, I was able to find this data here. And what we know from cycles is that we can have smaller cycles within larger cycles within even larger cycles. And in the case of the interest rates, we are potentially in a interest rate increase environment over the next 20, 30, 40 years. Now, this isn't just me saying it, it's basically some of the data here. We can go back even further, but I'll leave that for other videos. For now, we're just looking at where the lows came in for the interest rates. And this was around the mid 30s, 1930s. You can expand this out to the late 1930s, obviously at the start of the Second World War. And then from that period on, the interest rates continued to climb and climb and climb. Now, just prior to that, when you get to that bottom there in the, in the 30s, going back uh, from the data that we have here, just that 20 years, interest rates were much, much higher, five, six, seven percent, and they they slowly climbed down. So if we went back 20 years prior to that, maybe they were stabilized at these levels, maybe they were slightly higher. But so far, just from this particular 80-year uh, cycle that we can see from around these 30s, late 30s, into the data that we have here, from the 50s, it continued up into the 80s. So late 30s, early 40s, into that early 80s, approximately 40 years. Now, on the way down from the early 80s into the 2020s, you can see the interest rates continued down and down and down. Now, we could be at the start of another cycle like this, another 40 years of interest rates increasing. I know it sounds absolutely wild to say that, especially when we're all used to having 0% interest rates. And now that we see an interest rate of three and a quarter, 4%, we're out of our minds. But this historically has been a very low level for interest rates overall. And if we are going through a 40 year cycle, and of course we won't know that for many, many years to come, uh, this could just be the start of the new norm where interest rates continue to climb over the next 40 years. But with dips, as we've seen in the past, going from the less than half a percent, which was after the war, up to three or 4%, back down, 4% down, 6%, back down to four, and you can see the same sort of pattern happen all the way up to the 80s and all the way back down. That stuff we can't dispute. It's the fact of the charts, and if we're just looking at those particular cycles, then it is possible that maybe we have a 40 years up, 40 years down, thereabouts, and we're about to begin another particular cycle like this. Now, this also works in with the economic cycle, basically the land value cycle. Another thing I reference is the property cycle. It's all the same thing, property, economic, uh, land values. And we're coming towards the end of another peak in the land values in potentially stock, stock markets as well. And we're really starting to see these bottom patterns forming. And in terms of the interest rates, just the same thing on a different chart here, just a little bit cleaner to see that nice flow. Uh, we're going to marry these interest rates up to what happens in the stock market at these periods and then look out for what we could expect during this last half of the real estate cycle. So just a quick look at this cycle here. We are going through this particular process right now, the mid-cycle slowdown. We'll be coming out of this probably in the next year or so. You can essentially drop 2020, 2021 to this middle period. And then as we climb up to that peak, maybe it's in 2025, maybe it's 2026, 2027. We don't know just yet. But of course, in terms of the timing, it should be somewhere around middle of this particular decade. And nothing has changed in terms of what we're seeing with the, the macro data to say that this is any less likely to happen. So middle of this cycle we're in right now and now we're heading out of this. This has got over 200 years of data as well with this particular cycle. And so we can't deny that particular uh, data. And to say it might not happen this time, I think is a far stretch and the probabilities are not on our side. Doesn't mean we can't be wrong, but the probabilities are not on our side, seeing as though the data has been proven over the last 200 years. So we've got an idea of the interest rates, what's happening right now, looking at the macro picture, looking at the short term interest rate rises. We are in the midst of the mid cycle slowdown, potentially coming out of this for the economy and 
land values as well, which then leads into a, a winner's curse at the, at the end. But we still have this next stage of that bull market to go before a very significant collapse. Things will, could go very, very pear-shaped and bad for everyone. But before that happens, we have some good time. So we need to make the most of it and not sit in fear and wait and wait and wait while we watch uh, the markets head off without us. So <clears throat> what we're going to have a look at here is what's happened in the past with the interest rates. And if the interest rates are increasing, what happens to the stock market? So on this chart, it's pointed out some of the peaks here in terms of the land values so around that mid 70, 73. Another one was around 89, 90, just depending where we are in the world. And then the next one was around 2006, 2007 for the land values, not talking about the stock market, but around the land values themselves. So as we saw the land values peak, we also saw interest rate rises. So we can see the bottom here, the red line I've drawn just as a rough guide for the pricing of land. And then in terms of these blue vertical lines, it just shows us where the bottom of the interest rate trend was when the market, where the uh, interest rates were coming down before they started to head up again. And then of course, down and up and down and up in amongst two to three of these last cycles. So going back to the 80s, around that 86 period, we had a peak in the stock market around 87 before the Black uh, Friday crash. And the markets then um, absolutely tanked about 50% over a day or two. So it was a lot of heartache there. However, the interest rates continued up towards the end of that decade. And like we're looking at with this particular cycle into 1989, that's when land prices also peaked as well. So interest rates were going up while land values were also going up. This is just the data from history. So this is going into the peak of that cycle. Then, of course, the interest rates uh, turned over. They started to drop them again and the markets head down because basically what tends to happen is everyone is scurrying into the market, pushing these prices up. We get a uh, end of cycle winner's curse stage where everyone's excited. Think about an altcoin season going absolutely nuts. Everyone trying to get in. The same thing happens in real estate, but it takes a lot longer for these cycles to happen. It's not like a once every four year thing. It's basically like a once every 10, seven to 10 year thing with the ultimate peak being at the end of that 14 years, four years down, which gives us that approximate 18 year cycle. So there's the 80s into that peak. Interest rates come down, rest of the market comes down, the property prices are trying to figure out what they're doing. Everything resets before we start to take off again. And so from the mid 90s, we can see that interest rates started to climb. The stock market was a little stable here. And remember, this is on log as well. So there's a fair bit of data within this particular move. Interest rates started to climb and the market climbed out of its slumps and then started to stabilize at these levels with, mind you, a slight, what some might call a pivot going from around 6% down to about 5% and then back up to about 5.5% down to 4.5% and then towards the end of that first half of the cycle, basically the peak into 2000, we saw interest rates continue to rise as property prices rose as well. Interest rates were rising, stock market was rising into the peak, property prices were rising into that peak as well. Interest rates start to turn over uh, when the market basically has no more buyers left in it. Basically, everyone is buying, everything is going up, no more people left to buy, therefore demand diminishes and the markets start to roll over. And we have the same repeat here, markets start to head down. The Fed drops the interest rates and the cycle repeats yet again. So from these lows in 2003, so we're nearly going back 20 years now, some flat periods and then the interest rates started to rise. So into that last peak of that real estate cycle, which happened in the peak of 2007, you can see that interest rates were rising. They plateaued in 2006 and 2007 and then started to fall as the rest of the market came crumbling down. So that was interest rates rising, stock market rising, property prices rising. Now we get a bottom in 20, uh, 2009, 2010, interest rates are basically flat and the Fed is going on an absolute money printing spree. So there's a ton of money being printed to try and prop this market up with 0% interest rates. Eventually they have to start putting the interest rates up. They get up to 2.5% and then we start to peak out in February of 2020, just before the pandemic. So most of us should remember this. It's a reasonably recent history. And then the markets started to roll over at that point. They dropped the interest rates a few times just before that peak. And then, of course, everything happened so quickly within a month or two. 
only time in history that we've seen that uh, happen so quickly all the way to zero. And then we stayed flat while they continued to print money into the system. So we saw markets rise without interest rates rising as well, but we also saw a lot of money printing. And in the past, we've also seen markets rise with not as much money printing. We know that from a fact that most of the money in history has been printed just in the last couple of years. So we've seen markets go up. We've seen interest rates also go up and we've seen property prices go up all the while interest rates are going up. So this time, even if they don't pivot and turn interest rates down because the money printer is now off, maybe they turn that back on, but let's assume making asses out of ourselves, but we'll assume that they don't turn the money printers back on. Even with interest rates rising, we have seen it in the past where everything has continued up as interest rates have continued to or have started to rise as well. Interest rates rising, market is turning at the moment. This doesn't happen overnight. This could be uh, the start of uh, the next run, or we may see another higher low form in quarter one. We don't know yet, but that's what we're leaning towards anyway on this channel. So then we start to see the move up, interest rates continue up. We have looked at the 40-year uh, cycles here of interest rates continuing up, of course, with, with movements um, within the overall trend of being up. And that could then lead into the peak of this real estate cycle expected sometime mid this decade. I've talked a lot about 2026, maybe it's 2025. We still have a few years to go so we can uh, stay up to date with this along the way. And I'm not changing my stance here on the 2026. We just need to stay up to date with what's happening out there in the market and what's going on overall in terms of the charts and pricing, interest rates, all that sort of thing. Now, there are going to be many, many signals that come up towards the end of this peak, especially stocks like home builders and developers and uh, companies that are holding land themselves. They'll start to see profits diminish towards the end of this cycle. So it's going to be a key thing that we'll pay attention to overall. And so why I went over that in a lot more detail is because we've never seen Bitcoin in this stage of the cycle, in this last stage of a winner's curse cycle in the property cycle, because Bitcoin was essentially born at the beginning of this cycle. We saw it come out in 2009 and started trading in 2010 at, at just basically pennies here, and then started to make its way to a dollar just in the, the following year in 2011. So we've never seen Bitcoin at the end of these cycles where everyone is going ballistic in the stock market, and in real estate, everyone's got a lot of money to throw out, throw around absolutely everywhere. And so if that's the case, the big hopium here for Bitcoin is if you can hold out for that period there and not get sucked out of your position while we're sitting at around $16,000, continue to uh, accumulate based on your own plans, then what we could anticipate is that we'll start to see money getting sloshed around into cryptos and of course the least risky at the moment especially what we've seen in the last cycle for uh, institutions is of course bitcoin and it seems like ethereum is coming through in that regard as well so leading up to this peak somewhere around mid 2020 somewhere middle of this decade maybe we start to see bitcoin base out and then go on that next huge ride maybe 2025 2026, just short of the previous peaks for the stock market and potentially real estate. We'll wait and see what happens. That's still a few years away. The main thing, the main hopium here is that even if the Fed is to uh, pivot, maybe just slow down on any interest rate rises, the main thing that we've seen in history is that even with interest rate rises, we've seen stock markets uh, also rise in that period and land values rise. And I suspect Bitcoin will also do the same as it's a speculative asset class. And when people have got a lot of money and not a lot of sense, we all know that money gets thrown around into markets for much bigger gains. I hope you found a ton of value from that. If you did, stay tuned for other videos that are popping up right now and also check out these other macro videos in the macro playlists on the channel. Like, subscribe, plenty more coming up on the macroeconomics, the stock markets, and of course, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, uh, piecing this all together as we lead into the end stage of this 18.6 year real estate cycle. Thanks once again, guys. And if you want to stay up to date with more info, check out the link in the top of the video description for our alpha report there. Drop your email address and subscribe to it. I'll see you at the next video. Until then, peace out.